So our fusion of linear independence and span is going to come up in this definition here of basis. Today we're going to be looking at basis and dimension, which is two really awesome, cool ways of defining a vector space or a subspace of a vector space. So we can define a basis as a linearly independent set of vectors that span a vector space. So that means that we have some set of vectors that together span the whole entire vector space, but it's the smallest set of vectors that do so. So let's look at an example. So we have this set here of B, and it's equal to the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. Does this form a basis for R2? Well, is it linearly independent? Well, seeing as though neither of these are multiples of each other, yes, it's linearly independent. Does it span the entire vector space of R2? Well, yeah, so like if we wanted to get some vector x, y out, all we would have to do is multiply our first vector by x and our second vector by y, and we would find that together that would form a linear combination that would give us our x, y. So yes, it does span the entire vector space. So we actually have a very special name for this, and it is the standard basis of R2. We can actually construct a similar basis for Rn just by taking the columns of our identity matrix of size n and using those columns as vectors to form our basis because that means they're going to be linearly independent and easily span the entire vector space. So let's look at a couple examples that may not be so trivial. So we have this set here, C, and it contains only one vector, 1, 2. So does this set here, C, is that a basis for R2? Well, you ask yourselves, is this linearly independent? Well, yeah, but does it span the entire vector space? No, because I mean, if we wanted to get like four, two out, then we have no C1 that we can multiply by one, two to get the vector four, two. Because we'd have to multiply one by four, we'd only be able to multiply two by one. So there's no way that we can find a C1 value that this works. So now, we can actually create a new C star and include this vector here. So even though C here does not form a basis for R2, our C star will. And why is that? Because these two vectors are linearly independent, and when we try to find a linear combination of these two vectors for any vector in R2, we will be successful. You can try that yourself by putting this into an uh, augmented matrix, augmented with just a generic vector x, y, and you'll see that you can get conditions on C1 and C2 so that we can find a linear combination for any vector in R2. So C star is a basis for R2. So now let's look at another example. Let's look at this set D and see if it spans our subspace of R3 up here. And our subspace is going to be the set of vectors in R3, x, y, and z, such that z is equal to 2x plus 2y. So we, can, we know that this set here spans all of s, but is it linearly independent? Well, let's take out our magnifying glass and kind of inspect and be like, no, it's not linearly independent because if we add these two vectors together, we're going to get our third vector here. But also, if we put these into a matrix, since we have three matrices of, or three vectors of size three, we can throw this into a matrix, have a three by three matrix, find the determinant, and whoops, it's equal to zero. So these are not linearly independent. So what we can do is we can actually just delete one of our problem vectors. So since we know already that this one is a linear combination of these two vectors, we can go ahead and delete it, and we'll make our new D star, and that's going to be equal to the other two vectors. And because D span all of S, we know that D star is also going to span all of S, and we also know that these two vectors are linearly independent because they're not multiples of each other. So there's no way that we can write 1, 1, 4 as a linear combination of 1, 0, 2, or vice versa. So D forms the basis 
for us. So now we're going to be talking about something super important for bases and how we define and characterize different vector spaces and their subspaces. So we can define dimension as the number of vectors in a basis for a vector space or a subspace. We already decided that B and C star are both bases for R2 as they are both linearly independent and span R2. So if we look at the dimension of B, we see that it is dimension 2 because it has two vectors in its basis. We have one, two vectors, so this dimension is 2. Similarly, we look at C star, we also decided it is a basis for R2 as it is linearly independent and spans R2, and it has two vectors in this basis, so it also has dimension 2. So this is going to give us a really interesting truth. All bases that span some vector space Rn is going to have dimension n. So now let's look at the other bases that we explored here. So we looked at this set here as a basis for our subspace of R3 of vectors of x, y, and z such that z is equal to 2x plus 2y. So we decided that this was a basis, so what's its dimension? It has two vectors in it, so this has dimension 2. So, since it has dimension 2, we might be kind of confused because it's spanning some subspace of R3. However, our subspace here has only dimension 2. If you think about it graphically, we only have two variables that are defining all entries in our subspace. So, it kind of makes sense that it has dimension 2. So, even though this is spanning elements in R3, it has a basis of dimension two. So we have looked today at basis and dimension. These are two very important topics in the marriage of span and linear independence and together they help us define a vector space and the subspaces of vector spaces. So these are super important, super groovy, and something so awesome to know. So you learned something really cool today. Have a great day.